The Jewish Bride, painted in 1665, is one of Rembrandt van Rijn's last portraits he completed during the Baroque period and is considered to be one of the best portrait paintings of his last years. The painting gets its name from a Dutch art dealer who depicted the subject as being a Jewish father gifting his daughter a necklace on her wedding day. Although the subject matter of the painting is focused around these two figures, the identity of the two remain unconfirmed. Yet they are widely believed by historians to be inspired by two important characters from the Old Testament, Isaac and his wife Rebekah. This subject is thought to be inspired from the story in which Isaac passes off Rebecca as his sister in the Philistines, while being spied on by the king Abimelech, who Rebecca was promised to. It is widely believed that Rembrandt saw a similar situation between this biblical couple and his relationship with his housekeeper, who he was forbidden from because of financial complications with his previous wife. Instead of the painting representing a typical and authentic demonstration of a pre-wedding scene from the Bible, the Dutch artist chooses to paint a more romantic scene. This is evident in the way that the man places his hand tenderly over the woman's chest while she moves, trying to conserve her modesty, representing the movement of Protestant Reformation art. The body language of the two figures also represents a more tender, deep love rather than a passionate and lustful affair. Rembrandt's signature and easily recognizable style is seen in the emphatic chiaroscuro and tenebrism in this particular painting. The abrupt contrast of lights and darks almost names him immediately, and you can see the tenebrism in the painting where the background is dark, but the light in the portrait is focused on the faces of the man and the woman. His brilliant use of chiaroscuro makes the figures prominent, making them rounded, almost three-dimensional-like, and he adds a Byzantine style in the jewelry he adds to the woman. Rembrandt also had a way of capturing true emotion in his works, and reflects his own feelings in this painting. While creating The Jewish Bride, he was going through emotional trauma in his life and also in his work, and this is illustrated in the emotion of the figures. An encyclopedia of art education says that he expresses this pain in the modest expectations in Isaac's eyes, almost displaying uncertainty of what the future holds, while Rebecca is thoughtful and distracted. For all these reasons, Klaus Karl considers this masterpiece a psychological portrait and is another reminder of why Rembrandt is considered one of the best portrait artists and possibly one of the greatest artists of all time. Mark Ryden is an American artist from California. He graduated from the Art Center in Pasadena and has been dubbed the Godfather of Pop Surrealism by Interview Magazine. Ryden has had a huge influence on art genre entitled Pop Surrealism, which removes the differences between high and low art. Ryden finds inspiration from toys, stuffed animals, skeletons, flea markets, and most importantly, Nature. Ryden's The Tree of Life was hugely influenced by Giotto's Virgin and Child and Throne. Although the subject matter may seem similar, I assure you it isn't. The subject matter depicts the coronation of Mary. The coronation shows Mary reaching the peak of the pyramid and even placing her above kings. The baby in Mary's arms is actually not Jesus, like in Giotto's painting, of course. This child is Cernunos, which is the Celtic god associated with animals and hunting. The bees around Mary are her servants, and they are used to show her high class. The bear is associated with the denaturing of nature. Through cartoons and other non-realistic illustrations, we remove the brutality and the true nature of the world. The trees are the most important subject in this piece. They are meant to represent the proof of spiritual powers hidden within them. This whole piece is meant to show how the majority of society feels more important and above nature. The painting is not only about society's reflection, but about the mystery of art and nature.
Mark Ryden once stated that it is perplexing to me how some can look at these extraordinary trees and see evidence of a spiritual power while others only see a commodity. With this obsession of trees, we can observe the influence of another artist, Bernini. In Mark Ryden's Return to Nature, Holly Myers states that Mark Ryden counts Bernini's famous sculpture of Daphne among his sources for the tree show, which was a collection of Ryden's pieces that included the tree of life. Back to the meaning of the painting. The placement of Mary above the tree shows the people feel more important than nature, but it is also, in combination with the tree, a giant spiritual piece showing the importance of spirituality being above men and nature. For these reasons, it is easy to see why Mark Ryan is such an influence on today's pop surrealism.